Hey guys, in this video we'll go through a method of avoiding texture repetition when working with big surfaces that need the map to be tiled many times. This, in fact, is one of the most noticeable problems we encounter with texture mapping. One simple way of moving the problem further could be using a bigger texture that would need to be tiled on a bigger scale. Sadly, there's a limit on how big we can make a texture and the performance hit that we would have in a shader that uses many textures would make this solution a bad one very quickly. So now I'll show you one of the potential solutions to this problem that may work good enough depending on which texture you're looking to use. It is a fairly cheap and smart way of moving around the UVs we want to use for our texture, that will result in a more chaotic and less repeating mapping. The first thing we want to do is to map a smooth noise on the surface. Something like Gaussian or pearly noises will be fine. We can compute them procedurally in the shader or take them from a texture. This texture should be mapped though using the same UVs we want to use for our material, but on a bigger scale. Now we want to quantize these noise values, so that we will have a series of concentric constant values. To do that, we can multiply the noise for an integer parameter and then divide the result using the same parameter to go back to the 0-1 range. Since we didn't use a constant for this number, now we can potentially tune up this quantization in a material instance. Now we need an intermitting mask that alternates on and off status at each quantized step. To obtain that, we can take the quantization value before the final division and do its module of 2. In this way, every even value will be 0 and every odd value will be 1. Now we can take this mask and the quantized noise and combine everything in a vector 2 that will function as UV offset for our main UVs. For this example, we will generate the UV offset using every 0 mask value as an offset along U and every 1 mask value as an offset along V. Now we can finally add everything to our texture UVs. As you can see, this method comes with a couple of drawbacks. The first one is that it generates a lot of seams in our mapping. This could be very noticeable or not, depending on how noisy the mapped texture is. The second one, which I'm not sure you'll be able to see through a compressed video, is that along these seams there are some broken pixels. This last one can easily be fixed and by doing so, the first problem can be mitigated to some extent too. This issue is caused by the texture sampler picking the wrong MIP map level. If you don't know what it is, to have a rough idea, you can imagine the texture like having multiple versions of itself at different resolution scales. These different versions are called MIP maps and they are identified with a level number. Zero is the texture at full resolution. Every time I increase the level number by 1, the texture resolution is halved. This is also the reason why we always want to have the textures with a power of two sides. 
When it needs to sample a texture, the shader decides to pick a mipmap level in relation to how quickly the UV values used to map it change from one pixel to the next one. For this reason, where we have the seams, the shader becomes confused, as it sees a very sharp change in UV values and it supposes it means that a very long distance is covered between those two pixels. So it decides to sample the last mipmap level, which is the one pixel per one pixel size version of our texture. To avoid that, we have to specify to the sampler to use another data to decide which MIP level to pick. In our case, we are going to use the UVs before all the offsetting operations we did to break the tiling of the texture. In this way, the sampler will see the UVs changing with exactly the same speed from one pixel to another, but in this case, it will not see any seams. To do that, we have to change this property inside the sampler, which will expose the derivative input pins. Now we will calculate the ddx and the dy of the data we want to be used from the sampler and plug everything in. As you can see, those wrong pixels are gone, and the seams are now less noticeable too. If the visual result doesn't satisfy us yet, because the seams keep being too disturbing, there's something else we can do. This modification raises the cost of this algorithm, but gets rid of all the seams problem. To keep it short, we can just separate the offset along U and V and fetch the texture two times, so that we can interpolate the two sampled version as we prefer. To do that, we can quantize the noise two times, one with an offset of half step. In this way, one quantization always has the seam where the other one doesn't. Now, instead of generating a binary mask, we have to generate a gradient mask, which will be white along one quantization step, and black on the other one step. We can do that by taking the fractional data of the scaled noise, before the quantization. Then we can rescale the values in a way that both the original 0 and 1 will have the value of 1, and 0.5 will be our new zero. Now we can add some contrast control to our gradient and finally use it to interpolate the two sampled versions of the texture. By moving this parameter we can control the sharpness of the transition and we are free to add any fancy algorithm we want to make it more interesting. For this purpose you can take inspiration from my videos about texture transitions and height blending. Being able to break the tiling of a texture in a relatively cheap way like this can be extremely helpful to maintain under control complex shaders complexity. 
since it can lead to a lower number of layer used overall, for example. Of course, there are many other ways to hide text repetition, which will be discussed in future videos. Thank you.